Last night we completed the 20th juz, which comprises of the completion of Surah Al-Naml, Surah Al-Qasas, and part of Surah Al-Ankabut. just want to focus on the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, which is a Makki Surah. And as we mentioned before, Makki Surahs tend to focus on Iman, uh, the hereafter, and the denouncement of Shirk. So, as you know, at the beginning of Islam, when people started becoming Muslim, especially in the Makki period, there was a lot of um, turmoil and a lot of difficulty for the first Muslims uh, to a point that many of them used to get thrown out of their houses. Many of them were uh, isolated from their families. Many were boycotted. So this difficulty obviously used to be burdensome for the believers. And they used to come to the Prophet ﷺ and complain about these issues and say that when is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming? It's so mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah, Am Hasibtum and Tadhulu Janata, Walamma Yatikum Matalu Ladina Khalo Min Kablikum, Masatumul Basau, Wabarau, Wazulziru, Hatta Yakula Rasulu Waladina Amanu Mahu, Mata Nasrullah, Allah in Nasrullahi Karib. That do you think that you're going to enter paradise? And the example of those people that came before you has not touched you yet. Difficulty and hardship came to them and they were shaken until the Prophet and the people of Iman, they all said, when is the help of Allah going to come down? Allah declares that when this happens, Allah be aware that indeed the help of Allah is close. So the point that this surah, the beginning of the surah, makes to those people that were going through those difficulties and actually to all of us that claim to be believers is that we will be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be exams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test our mettle, to test our endurance, to test whether we are true in our claim as believers. Are we truly believers or not? So that's going to come in the form of hardship, difficulty, uh, sickness, um, maybe a natural disaster, uh, problems within your community, problems within the family. There's going to be ups and downs and there's never going to be a, a situation where everything is going to be 100% stable, everything's going to be rosy. That doesn't happen. There's al always going to be some form of a test that you have to endure and you have to go through. So right at the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after saying Alif Lam Mim, which is from the Huruf al Muqatta'at, he says, Ahasib an Nasu an Yutraku an Yakulu Amanna wa Humla Yuftanun. Did the people think that they can just say Amanna, we have Iman, and they're not going to be tested? They, are they going to be just left alone after they say Amanna, and they're not going to be tested? Allah says, Wa laqad fatanna ladina min qablihim. Indeed, we've tested the people that came before them. All the nations that came before, they went through difficulty and hardship. And they went through a lot of turbulence when they accepted Iman. So this is the same situation that's going to come for everybody. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Indeed, we have tested the people that came before, before them. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ the wording here is very, very strong. Here the word لَيَعْلَمَنَّ is mentioned twice. That didn't need to be done. You, you only need to mention that once. Then the wording itself, 
Ya'lamu means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to find out. Say Ya'lamu. This is the real, actual, original word. But then if you want to put stress on it, you can put stress on it by putting a lam at the beginning. Lam ta'kid. La ya'lamu. And uh, a lam ta'kid at the end, at the, on the second word. La ya'lamu. But there is an extra level of stress over here. And that is the noon ta'kid at the end of these words, both of them. So, la ya'lamu, ya'lamu means he, will, he knows, and la ya'lamu means certainly he will know, and la ya'lamanna, it means most absolutely certainly he will know. Okay, so mostly, most absolutely certainly, with no doubt whatsoever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is going to know who tells the truth, and again, he repeats it, most certainly, absolutely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to know the people who lie. What does that mean? That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you. And he will find out who is true in his claim of belief and who is lying in his claim of belief. Because the person who has belief, when he's tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he do? He just accepts that this is the de decree of Allah and he accepts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing him and he knows فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed with every difficulty there's ease with every difficulty there's ease and he waits for that ease to open up in the meantime just turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focusing his attention to him making dua to him asking Allah to open up that ease quickly because of the fact that we ourselves are weak but understanding that this is decreed by Allah and it is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no way that you can counter it. So the truthful one will do that. As for the one who is lying about his iman, immediately he is going to start complaining and wailing and saying things which are, uh, you know, words of kufr and disbelief. And Allah describes that in another verse in the Quran. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ Many people, they just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the edge. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرِ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ فِتْنَةً إِنْ خَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وُجْهِ As long as good is coming, as long as the situation is, is favor, favorable for him, he will continue to be a good believer, he will continue to uh, be at least a good worshipper, he will go through the motions of uh, worshipping. And when difficulty comes, he will turn around and he will turn his back on Islam and he will say that I was worshipping Allah for so long and this is how he pays me back. This is how the uh, person who has weak Iman reacts to difficulty. The one who has strong Iman and strong conviction, it makes him even more steadfast and this is what is meant here that Allah will most certainly find out the people who are true and he will most certainly find out the people who are lying about their Iman. And that will come in the form of tests. The next thing Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ سَيْئَاتِ أَنْ يَسْبِقُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ Do the people that are doing bad deeds, do they think that they can beat us? That they can outrun us? Outrun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How long are they going to run? How long can they run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As much as in this world a person can run away from justice until he dies, right? After he dies, if he didn't get justice in this world, if he didn't pay back the people that he wronged in this world, then obviously he has to meet Allah, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Nobody is going to run away forever. So again, a very powerful statement. Do the people that did bad, do they think that they're going to outrun us, outrun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What a bad judgment they have. Whoever has the hope of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming. So the word yarju here, it means the real meaning is hope. But some scholars actually say in the context of the wording around it, the ayah before it, it's, it said that they, the, the person who did bad he cannot outrun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so the next verse, some scholars they say it's 
it refers to a person who's afraid of death. Why is he afraid of death? Why is, does a person uh, be afraid of dying? He's only afraid of dying because he knows he isn't prepared for, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either because he didn't do what he's supposed to do as a believer, or he wronged people, he wronged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't spend his life as he's supposed to spend it, as obviously now he's afraid to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, مَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَآتِ So, this can mean in the context, whoever is afraid of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's no point in being afraid, it's, it's going to come. Whether you're afraid or not, the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to come. However, if you look at those real wording, it means whoever has the hope of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning a person who's a true believer, he's obviously hoping to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very soon because he wants to get out of this world and its pains and its trials and its tribulations and its difficulties and he wants to get the ease of the hereafter and you know the uh, paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him and the bliss of looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeing him and meeting him so obviously for him there's a hope فَإِنَّ أَجَلَ اللَّهِ لَآتِ that time is going to come and he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهُوَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ he is all hearing and he is all knowing وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ whoever strives he is striving for himself إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ whoever does good deeds in this world he is doing it for his own benefit Allah doesn't benefit from it at all Allah is ghani he is uh, he is carefree. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anybody. He doesn't need our worship. He doesn't need our qiyam. He doesn't need our siyam. He doesn't need our iman. He doesn't need anything from us. But when we do these good deeds, this is for our, for our, for our own benefit. Other scholars, they interpret this verse slightly different. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ The person who makes jihad and he makes the jihad for his own ulterior motives meaning a person he is claiming that he's making jihad he's striving, he's fighting, he's uh, going out to uh, seemingly propagate the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he's doing it for his own ulterior motive he's doing it maybe to uh, show other people that he's very brave or he's doing it to get the spoils of war or he's doing it to get some land. Because it's mentioned in a hadith, Prophet ﷺ was asked that a person who fights uh, for honor, a person who fights for the spoils of war, a person who fights for land, which one is fi sabirillah, ya Rasulullah? Which of these is fi sabirillah? The Prophet ﷺ said, none of them. Fi sabirillah, when a person is striving for the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his intention is only one. مَنْ قَاتَلَ لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلِيَا فَهُوَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Whoever is fighting, whoever is striving to promote the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world, to promote tawheed, to promote the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to denounce shirk, to get rid of shirk from society and kufr from society, that is fi sabil Allah. Anything else, it is not fighting with the correct intention. So here, Muhammad Jahada, whoever strives, but he's striving for himself. He's doing it for his own ulterior motive. Allah says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need that type of striving. This is another interpretation. But most scholars, they interpreted the first interpretation. Whoever strives, then he's striving for his own benefit, meaning he's for his own reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything from anybody. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَنَجَزِيَنَّهُمْ أَحْسَنَ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And those people that did, had iman and they did good deeds, most certainly we're going to forgive them their sins and most certainly we're going to reward them better than what they did. So we mentioned this before that really our a'mal in comparison to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are really nothing. A few fasts we keep, you know, we pray maybe 
five times a day, takes 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, what is that in comparison to the eyesight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? The ability to walk, the ability to talk, the ability to eat, the ability to digest our food, the ability to do so many things uh, Allah has given us. If you were to compare that with the a'mal that we do, and you try to value our a'mal in comparison to the blessings that Allah has given us, then we are really in negative. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking the deeds that we do, multiplying them in these blessed uh, times, for example, in Ramadan, or uh, multiplying the deeds uh, because He does multiply the deeds, and then just giving many, many fold to us more than we deserve. This is what is meant. Most certainly we're going to give them better than what they did. After that Allah says, we talked about this a little last night, the issue of respect to the parents. Indeed we advise the human that he should do good to his parents, even if they're disbelievers. And the only thing that you should stop with is If they strive to make you commit shirk with me, then that you don't have knowledge about. What does that mean, that you don't have knowledge about? When you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be with firm knowledge and with the firm conviction that you believe in him. When you are committing shirk, then the situation is that you are worshipping idols. Obviously their non-existence in the form of being gods is true, that they are non-existent. So you cannot have knowledge about something that is non-existent. Okay, ma laysa laka bi'ilm means that these partners that people commit shirk about, they do it without knowledge, basically they should not be doing that. So they, if your parents strive to make you commit shirk with that about which you have no knowledge, then don't obey them at that time. But other than that, even if they are disbelievers, you are supposed to obey them. Only to me is your return and I'm going to inform you of everything that you did. I'm going to just skip a verse and just come to um, the final verse that I want to talk about. And this goes back to this issue of the trials and tribulations that Allah SWT gives us. Talking about the munafiqeen and again the people of weak of iman. There are many people that say that we have iman in Allah SWT. But when they're tested by Allah, when they are harmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in anything, then what do they say? Or what do they do? They make the trial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, into the punishment of Allah. So Allah is testing you. He gave you the flu. He gave you a headache. He made you sick for a while. He made you lose your job for a while. And instead of accepting it as being a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a phase that you will come out of, people regard it as being a punishment from Allah. They think, why did Allah punish me? What did I do to deserve this? So this is not how a mu'min reacts. This is talking about the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. So straight after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَئِنْ جَاءَ نَصْرٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّا كُنَّا مَعَكُمْ The munafiqeen, whenever the spoils used to come, they used to come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, we, we, we are with you. So basically we want a part of the share of this, uh, these spoils that you're distributing. Do they not realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowing about what is in the hearts of the worlds, meaning the different people, whatever they have in their hearts in terms of nifaq, hypocrisy or iman. Are they not aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of it? So the summary basically is that we as Muslims, uh, we claim to be bearers of Iman and followers of Islam and believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
but with that comes the certainty that we will go through some kind of difficulty in our lives sometimes so the question is how do we react to that if we accept it and accept it to be a decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is a sign of our strong faith and conviction and if not then there is some weakness that we need to work on we need to work on our iman and strengthen it to a point that we become to that level or we become acceptable of the qada and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq to understand and practice what has been said and heard سمعت رسالتك بس أنا ما كلمت مع الشيخ أسامة هل هو جاهز أم لا لأنه كان مريض من يومين <تصفيق>